Hello and welcome to another video. So we haven't covered a mech mage in a little while and this variation is okay. I wanted to give it a solid go and at least try my best with it. Again, we are in that kind of off- At least might be a little engaging and have some potential, but of course we have covered all major meta decks now and there's not much left until the mini expansion, which shouldn't be that far away, I'm hoping. Hoping it'll be middle, mid 20s this time around and not late 20s of the month. Either way though, starting off we're just running the pretty basic back end for this deck. It runs on a very simple engine. Uh, mecha stuff, you don't see a lot, or machina stuff, sorry, I don't know how you want to go with that. I mean, that's machina, that's mecha, meh, either way. Works out really nice, of course Tetra being a really good card. And really just kind of rounding out the top end with some decent cards, Despondent Chimera being one of them. So we're going to get right into this and check it out. So uh, for the first game we are playing up against a Runecraft. Not surprising at all. Zero surprise going up against Runecraft. Of course, the one time I play Rune, I end up going Rune on Rune. So a very interesting start. Dual cores, I actually don't mind that. Going for the 3-3 three, three core on turn 3 and 4, and then Evo on 5 can work out quite well if you're going first, which is why we actually held them. Of course, having a turn 2 is also important, and we've actually got some decent lines of play now. I decided to go for life form first, even though I probably should have held on to it for the Evo turn. Since, of course, Robo Goblin could have at least absorbed that then. We did end up with another one though, so it wasn't a big deal. Although I have found with this deck, Overdraw becomes a huge issue. You've got to be very, very careful not to completely screw yourself with Overdraw, as I do that in more than one occasion using this deck. Magic Missile, more draw. Again, not a problem. So going for Life Form here may have been the wrong choice, especially when I went for two of them. I did have the space to go for some draw, but once you add in this four draw cards here, we end up with quite a lot of cards. And now every time I play any card in my hand, I'm going to be drawing, so... In this case, double drawing. So I should have probably just went for the insights instead of what I just did with the goblin. And I wouldn't have risked discarding a card. Of course, this is still a really good board and it's not going to be super easy to deal with. So I don't feel like we've made a wrong move here, necessarily. We just, of course didn't need to discard a card as hard as we did. We would have only had to discard one instead of two. They did a pretty good job. At least we retained a couple of cards on board. Now's our chance to throw the insights out, and of course if we draw more insight, that's just perfect. I mean, how many insight could one person truly want? I do need to get to the point though where I can free up a slot for our next draw. Which is why we went for that. I decided to hold on to the Evo point too, just in case. Since we have Tetra in hand, and just in case our opponent went for something crazy, I wanted to have at least a Tetra available. It does turn out, of course, this is basically a mirror match. For a deck that I thought, you know, wasn't very mainstream, getting a mirror match for one of our first games was pretty insane. A lot of people must be looking for interesting things to cover and play. So Tetra with a Revo does a pretty nice job. I think I may have screwed up a slightly here with this. I actually had more points than I needed to do what I wanted to do. So I could have actually just continued to play cards. I can't really remember if I paid enough attention. I think I did manage to play everything though. Yeah, I did. Good. There's a few times I've used Tetra and forgot that I had that extra point and missed a decent line of play. So Truth Adjudication, that one kind of hurts. Not what you want to see, and Fiery Embrace definitely didn't help. At least with these Golems, we're actually pretty set. And I could have wiped this without losing both of these. I probably should have just traded the one and then went for it. Would have been better, but uh, we did the job. We just missed out on potentially one damage. And again, still have a really good board to work with. So insights, they're going for some good draws. Come on, what are they going to have? Splendid, not really an issue. Another fire embrace and fate's hand. Come on, luck. Where's our luck? They got a really good way to wipe most of this out, and we don't really have a good way to retaliate. 
At least drawing cards should help us out. And with Sorcerer we actually get a chance to go for some more face damage. Putting them within lethal range of Chimera, we just need to make sure that Chimera has enough spells played on it. And at this point I think it was very close, just one off from winning us the game. Unfortunately though, they did end up warding, so that definitely ruined my plans. Especially since they healed up a massive amount, so I had to take things a little a little slower at winning the game. At least our tech lords are really high up. And yes, I know they are techno lord, but tech lord just rolls off the tongue better. So with just two health left, another truce adjudication almost killed us just one point. One point off. That's all they would have needed. Definitely pushed me right to the edge of this match, but it's really not going to be enough as Tech Lord is just going to clear this board and we're going to go face for more than enough damage. So, an extremely, extremely close mirror match. Next up, we are playing against Sword. One of the more popular decks in rotation, no surprise, it's been doing very well in the Grand Prix and other such events as. It's just become a very solid deck. It's actually one of the decks I hate going up against the most when I'm trying to play some of these off-meta decks because they really don't stand much of a chance in the sword matchup. Again, we're not playing meta decks, so I don't expect them to do extremely well, but it's very hard to get some decent gameplay when you're just being stomped in the immediate early game. At least in this situation, the game kind of went in our favor a little bit with some good early pulls and our opponent not having quite as good early pulls. Like, Sky Commander is good, but not really good when you're playing it on a flat board. Especially when we can literally just play our core because we're not afraid of that play. Servant of Usurp Tension, Quick Blader, a little bit of damage in, honestly, gotta commend him on that. That's a pretty solid, solid line of play. This time though, I did decide to of course force out the follower. I really wanted to get it on board, even if it's gonna cost us this turn. Because our next turn is actually fairly decent. We can actually go for Magitek Golem plus double Robo Golem. Thanks to, of course, the core. Giving us plenty of damage to really deal with this. So, a Robo Golem, Evo. Really didn't matter which way this went, we would have had a good chance, but not hitting the 1 1 was definitely the best. Since we can go for a maximum board. And we've also got the double Zealot of Truth, which. Having those early really gives us an edge. And there is the second Celia, so we know there are two Celia's in already. Definitely what I like to see. So I've still got the Wind Blast, we've also got the Tetra here. Tetra being, of course, probably the better line of play. I can actually wipe this board again and keep everything up, which is great. I believe I may miss the chance to actually heal a little though, do I? Or do I just not worry about that? I can't really remember. I guess I don't worry about it. <laughs> I played a lot of matches trying to get some of these games for you guys, and a lot of the lines of play are always very similar, so getting them confused does happen. Possible use of At least it's gone. We got left with the 4-3, that's pretty decent. We've also got the lifeform play, which since we do have repair modes, they basically become insights with healing abilities. I did decide to favor the insights first at least, just in case I got a half decent thing I wanted to play or keep the repair mode for healing on, but we end up just going all in with it, since we have put them that close to lethal. And I believe Staff of Whirlwinds can actually hit face, so with that alone we could have actually won. I believe it can. No, it has to be enemy follower, sorry. So that was was my mistake. Not that it matter, we do win anyway. I mean, three damage plus the zealots. I was just getting the zealots to zero for basically damn. A little unsportsmanlike, but I think it was fair considering how poorly I'd done with this deck before this. I'd lost a, probably a good three or four games straight before this match and really did hurt my pride a little bit. So, gotta get in where I can. So I've got a few more deck ideas lined up. I've got at least probably another nearly week's worth of videos planned out that I want to do and hopefully they all work out pretty nicely for you guys. If you have been enjoying these videos, do be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Please try and check out some of my other content. I know it's not 
all Shadowverse related and card game related, but it's definitely nice to see you guys supporting my other content while we can kind of branch out and develop the channel more. It definitely does help me, so if you guys are interested, of course, in playing this deck, though, you will find the link in the description below. Again, hit the like button and subscribe to show your support. Until next time, guys, see ya.